Today I've got a nice functional equation type problem for you. This comes from the International Math Olympiad short list. So let's see what we've got. We've got a function from r to r such that it's bounded by 1. So in other words, the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to 1 for all real numbers x. Furthermore, we have this like semi-periodicity condition. So we've got f of x plus 13 over 42 plus f of x equals f of x plus 1 over 6 plus f of x plus 1 over 7. And our goal is to show that this thing that looks kind of similar to periodicity is actually implying that this function is periodic. So maybe the first thing to do to get off the ground is to look at the relation between these numbers right here, 1 over 6, 1 over 7, and 13 over 42. And it's not a big stretch to see how those are related. Um, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7 equals 13 over 42, if you like give them a common denominator and stuff. So our next little step will be to rewrite this so that we've got subtraction on either side instead of addition on either side. And so that we can kind of think about group, grouping the addition of one over six and maybe the addition of one over seven. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So we can take this guy right here and rewrite it as f of x plus, instead of 13 over 42, I'm gonna write that as one over seven plus one over six. And then we can have minus f of x plus one over seven. So that's from moving that over. So that's gonna be equal to f of x plus one over six minus f of x. So again, that's just from rewriting this thing right here. So now from here, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of notation. And this notation is not super important to solve the question, but I think it makes it just a little bit simpler. I'm gonna group this x plus one over seven term together into a y. That means that this is also going to become y. Like I said, this is just gonna cut down on how much we need to write for some of these intermediate steps. So that allows us to rewrite this equation right here as f of y plus one over six minus f of y equals f of x plus one over six minus f of x. And then we can write here with y equal to x plus one over seven. So it's important to keep that relationship between y and x. This is not a totally free y. It's y as x plus one over seven. And that means that we can take this equation and then replace x with something. And that forces some replacement of y to grab some new equations. Inspired by the fact that we've got a plus one over six here and a plus one over six here, maybe we'd like to continually replace x with something until we get like x plus one. And why x plus one? Just because maybe that's something nice to work with and usually these things work out fairly nicely. But we'll work up to x plus one a little bit at a time. So let's make our first replacement where we replace x with x plus one over six. And notice that makes y be replaced with y plus one over six as well by the fact that x and y are linearly related like that. Okay, nice. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna give us f of y plus two over six minus f of y plus one over six equals f of x plus two over six minus f of x plus one over six. Now we can continue to do that. And so next we'll replace x with x plus two over six and that makes y be replaced with y plus two over six. Then we can get six similar equations. So let's maybe write all of those down now. Okay, so we got these six equations written down that we're gonna use as tools. So notice here starts at f of y plus one over six and goes all the way up to f of y plus six over six. In other words, f of y plus one. And we have a similar thing happening over here, but with f of x plus one over six, all the way up to f of x plus one. But the really nice thing happens when you add these equations. So if you observe, 
These equations are built so that they telescope with addition. So let's notice if we add these equations, we get a cancellation between this term and this term. We get a cancellation between this term and this term. We get a cancellation between this term and this term. And then this term and this term. And then finally this term and this term. So that means over there on the left-hand side of the equation, we are left with f of y plus 1 minus f of y. And then similarly, over there on the right-hand side of the equation, we'll we, we will be left with f of x plus 1 minus f of x, where I still want to recall that y and x are related as follows. So now let's maybe bring that to the top, and then we'll move on to the next step. On the last board, we determined that if we set y equal to x plus 1 over 7, we have f of y plus 1 minus f of y equals f of x plus 1 minus f of x. And that was done by making a combination of six equations related to like x plus something over 6. Now we're going to play a similar game, but we'll do that with x plus 1 over 7. But maybe before we do that, I can get rid of this y since we've simplified this quite a bit already. So I'll replace y with x plus 1 over 7. So that's going to give me f of x plus 1 plus 1 over 7. I did some commutativity there. As you can guess, we're going to make another replacement, x plus 1 equals something, just again for notational convenience. And then we'll have minus f of x plus 1 over 7 equals f of x plus 1 minus f of x. Now, let's go ahead and set z equal to x plus 1 and then rewrite this so that we group all of the z's on one side of the equation and all of the x's on the other side of the equation. So let's see. That means we have a z right here. We also have a z right here. So we see that f of z plus 1 over 7 minus f of z equals f of x plus 1 over 7 minus f of x like that. So where can we go from here? Well, now we can play the same game that we did on the last board, but we'll do it with multiples of 1 over 7 instead of multiples of 1 over 6. So I'll replace in this equation x with x plus 1 over 7. So I'll write that as x goes to x plus 1 over 7. But notice that that means that z also goes to z plus 1 over 7 because they are linear, linearly related. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us f of z plus 2 over 7 minus f of z plus 1 over 7 equals f of x plus 2 over 7 minus f of x plus 1 over 7. Now I think especially taking inspiration from what happened on the last board, we kind of see where things are going. We'll make a list of seven equations. I won't write all of them down, but they'll end at f of z plus 1. So the last one will be f of z plus 7 over 7. In other words, f of z plus 1 minus f of z plus 6 over 7 equals f of x plus 1 minus f of x plus 6 over 7. And then just like we did before, if we add these equations, we see that f of z plus 1 minus f of z, which we gain from everything canceling on the left-hand side of this equation, will be equal to f of x plus 1 minus f of x. But now we can replace z with x plus 1, and that gives us f of x plus 2 minus f of x plus 1 equals f of x plus 1 minus f of x. So now let's maybe bring that up, and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we arrived at the following equation. For all real numbers x, we have f of x plus 2 minus f of x plus 1 equals 
f of x plus one minus f of x. But now let's notice that we can rearrange this to write f of x plus two as f of x plus one plus f of x plus one minus f of x. And then next we can replace x with x plus one in this equation. And let's see what we get. That'll give us f of x plus three equals f of x plus two plus f of x plus two minus f of x plus one. But as we see, f of x plus two minus f of x plus one is exactly f of x plus one minus f of x by our formula that we developed on the last board. So let's replace that. And then we can furthermore replace f of x plus two with this thing right here. So that gives us f of x plus one plus two times this thing. So we've got two f of x plus one minus f of x. And then we can continue this inductively and we'll see that f of x plus n is equal to f of x plus one plus n minus one times f of x plus one minus f of x, like that. Okay, so now let's maybe bring that up and then we're about ready to finish it off. So we're almost done. So far we have that for all real numbers x and natural numbers n, f of x plus n is equal to f of x plus one plus n minus one times the quantity f of x plus one minus f of x. But now from here, I wanna make the following claim. And that claim that f of x equals f of x plus one. In other words, this object right here is equal to zero, making the whole function periodic. And how does the proof of that claim go? Well, maybe I'll leave that as a little homework exercise. It's not too bad. What you wanna do is work by way of contradiction, um, show that this would imply, or if this equality did not hold, it would imply that the function is not bounded, which is a problem because one of our assumptions is that the function is bounded. And that's a good place to stop.